Hello and welcome back to INMR. In today's podcast, I'm going to be analysing Man United's shock victory against Liverpool in the FA Cup. Despite Liverpool dominating and United seemingly giving up in the second half, Eric Ten Hag's side managed to squeeze through to the semi-final thanks to a last-minute winner from Ahmad Diallo. So, let's take a look at how that all happened. Ten Hag has been regularly criticised this season for a lack of clear play and style, and yesterday they didn't even seem to be playing a proper system. But before we look at the chaos, let's have a look at the positives. From the opening minutes of the game, United's attacking intent was obvious, target the left wing. United were creating overloads in those areas in the early stages, with Kobe Mainu supporting Rashford and Garnacho drifting over from the right to get on the ball too. They did this because Salah wasn't coming back to support Joe Gomez defensively, leaving the English defender on his own. 53% of United's attacking touches were down the left third of the pitch, highlighting the gaps open for them to expose due to their ability to isolate Gomez. What people don't realise is that United do have a style of play. It's fast, direct and full of intensity, but at its worst, it can look all over the place. At its best though, we get to see games that are sure to become instant classics like the 4-3 win yesterday. The stats show the approach isn't a million miles away from Liverpool's too. Yes, Liverpool are much better than United, but the general idea is the same. United have had the most direct attacks this season in the Premier League with 72, and Liverpool are close second to that with 71. And when United attack, they travel up the pitch with a speed of 1.92 metres per second, only slightly faster than Liverpool's 1.89. Of course, United are far from perfect, but there are similarities to Liverpool in attack. United are just behind the pack because they've got so much to improve on defensively. With Arsenal, City and Liverpool, they're solid both going forward and defensively, whereas United just haven't got that yet. If you have a look at the huge amount of space they leave behind for Liverpool to exploit after going 1-0 up, the gap between the midfielders chasing back and the back line is absolutely atrocious. United's attempt to win the ball high started off effective but as the tempo dropped the space behind became bigger and bigger leaving the back four all alone while six attackers chased back. Ten Hag's system isn't perfected yet which is why we're seeing this but instead of parking the bus and panicking like we've seen them do at different points this season United took risks and committed players forward and luckily for them Liverpool failed to take their chances and the risk eventually paid off. The question still remains as to whether Ten Hag is going to be given the time to perfect his system because at the moment United are playing too fast for their own good, too direct to maintain control of the game and with a tempo that just isn't sustainable over a 90 minute period and in this game's case even more. But when it works, it works superbly. United came flying at the blocks and reached an intensity level that we haven't seen from them at all this season. They should have arguably been two up if it wasn't for McTominay's missed chance to double the lead. United had seven shots on target in the first half but were caught out by Liverpool's speedy transitions. So it started off well, but this is where it went wrong. The distances between United's midfielders at the start were tight and contained, but then they opened up and Liverpool could exploit the empty spaces towards United's back line. Liverpool didn't put the game to bed when this happened and towards the end United picked up the pace again and punished Klopp's side. After the final whistle, the Liverpool players and fans looked shell-shocked as their hopes of the quadruple ended. Liverpool only had themselves to blame though and will be punished with no FA Cup final appearance as part of Klopp's goodbye in May. Their game management was poor and although they dominated possession, they allowed United to create great goal-scoring chances. Darwin Nunes conceded possession cheaply in the build-up to Rashford's equaliser and Diallo's winner was a counter-attack following a Liverpool corner. This season, Manu has stolen the show in most games due to his maturity and undeniable talent. He linked up well with wan to create early chances and was a bright spark in both defence and attack. He is, without a doubt, the future of Man United. But the youngster who's still the front page is Ahmad Diallo for his last-minute winner and what he describes as the best goal of his career. Three and a half years after signing for United for almost £40 million, Ahmed Diallo has finally had his moment in a United shirt. He played with intensity after coming on in the 85th minute for Varane and constantly looked to press Liverpool's defence and make something happen. Yes, he got two silly yellows and was sent off, but considering what he got in return, it doesn't really matter. A winner in front of the Stretford end to send his side to Wembley, he'll feel that was worth it. So what does this mean for United? Of course, we know it's a historic win and one that defies analysis. They were so poor at points, but just got over the line when it mattered. For extended periods, for me it looked like they weren't trying and then all of a sudden it was all guns blazing again. They can't continue like this though, it was a messy win and I doubt they'll get away with it again, certainly in this competition. 
Even with injuries and a rebuild in mind, United should never be playing Victor Lindelof as a fullback and Bruno Fernandes as a centre back. Does a successful FA Cup campaign make the current state of the club tolerable? Definitely not. But what it does do is distract fans for a little bit because at the end of the day, a trophy is a trophy and moments like Sunday make it all worthwhile. So, next up, they've got Coventry at Wembley. United got the easiest draw on paper for the semi-finals. Coventry beat Wolves 3-2 but will most likely fall short against the Red Devils. With that being said, we will probably end up seeing a Manchester derby in the final for a second year in a row. Man City should comfortably beat Chelsea. Although they haven't been able to do it this season, I do think this is where they get their win. This is United's only chance for silverware this season, so they have to take it. But the unorganised chaos needs to be fixed and fast. Because a side like Man City is going to embarrass them in the final, just like last year. I think City broke the deadlock within a minute in last year's final. That will happen again, and it will probably end up being more than 3-0. If they play as they did against Liverpool in the final, City would thrash them. That is where I'm going to end today's podcast, but there's plenty more coming this week. Tomorrow, I'll be talking about the Champions League quarterfinal draw and giving my prediction on how the tournament will play out. Then on Friday, I'll be doing a podcast on England and the upcoming Euros. For extra content, make sure you're following INMR on X and Instagram. And when my website is back up and running, be sure to check that out too. Thank you very much for listening and I'll see you in the next one.